This is a very short presentation uh, designed to really prepare our students, your children, for their year 11 examinations. Lots of top tips on how to revise, how to get ready for their examinations. I'm just doing a very short introduction. My name is Will Tees, the head teacher here. And I'm going to hand over to Mrs Hubbard, who leads outcomes across the campus, who's going to go through in more depth how we're going to get our year 11s ready for their examinations in the summer. So as you will know, this has been a very, very different year. And because it's been a very different year, we need to do things slightly differently. From my point of view, one of the clear messages that needs to come across is that every single lesson is now important for your children. Every single homework is important for your children. And everything they're asked to do online, be it through Google Classrooms, is important. Those materials are going to make all the difference for their examinations moving forwards. And it could be the evidence that we're required to use for CAGS should be in that situation again. Lots of resources are going to be made available to your child uh, over the coming weeks and months. We're going to have a new website very shortly. On that website will be a page directed at students and all the resources that we're sharing tonight and any future resources so that students can access those from any point in time and you as parents can also dip into them and use them to support your child when they're revising. I think one thing that's really important is we're aware that during this pandemic we've already had bubble closures for year 11. We don't know if that can happen again and will happen again. It, it is a possibility so therefore it is really important that engagement levels are kept as high as possible. If they do have to use the Google Classrooms work will be set on there and it's important that your child engages with everything that is set and asked by their teachers to ensure success in future examinations. I'm going to hand over now and I hope you find the next session really useful and informative and there will be more information to follow. We're recording this on Monday the 12th um, of October and today we've just had an announcement about exams um, uh, about 11 o'clock this morning. So the current position on exams is that they are going to take place. The government is, is really keen in England anyway for exams to, to continue. So that's the news that we've got today. Uh, but they are going to be pushed back uh, by three weeks. So the vast majority of exams are going to start on the 7th of June, which is after the half term. However, there will be one maths and one English before that. And the exams will therefore go on until the 2nd of July, so that there's a pushback for exams. So that's the current position. But obviously, uh, we will let you know if, if and when things change on that. Um, so our thoughts about what might happen? Well, we thought that they were going to push back the exams. Um, so that's not a surprise that that announcement has come today. Um, but obviously it is a turbulent year, it is a year that we've not dealt with before and last year we had to come up with CAGS or Centre to Assess Grades. We are really hoping that that will not be the case for this year, that is not something that we want to go back to um, and that you only had to listen to the news last year to understand that that isn't a, a nice situation to be in. However, for some students they may not be able to take all the exams, there may be disruption to the exam period, there could be any of that. Uh, throughout the year and so every single assessment that your students that your children take throughout the year are going to be really important so we've we've sort of recorded this now because we've got mocks coming up and you will have a letter this week about mocks um, and so that's our first real formal assessment of our current year 11s for this year um, and with the mocks and with any other assessment, we are going to come up with grades, but we're also going to start ranking the students just in case a student misses an exam and we can say to the exam board, well, they're always performing between this student and this student. Um, so that's what's going to go on at school. So normally we have an exam success evening on the 4th of February, and this is not entirely in its place, but you're going to get lots of videos like this, um, and I'll touch a little bit more about them in a minute. Um, and then on that evening, instead of having a big um, come in school sort of session, we'll just have a, a sort of virtual Q&A that you can come in and have a look at and talk to us if you've got any specific things about exams. But hopefully by then you'll have been bombarded with enough information. So achieving exam success together. Um, the aim of this presentation really is to provide you with information to, that's going to help you support your child to be successful in their GCSEs. And this is really the start of that process. So it, it, it's going to be quite vague, but I'm going to talk to you about general revision and exam techniques. 
although there'll be another video released this week which is a bit more specific about uh, revision techniques and we've got uh, people on our staff who are um, exam um, exam markers and so they're going to talk a lot about exam technique and how to really do well on exams what students need to do to be successful this year how you can help your child to be successful this year and what we're going to be doing to help support your child to be successful this year so that's the purpose of this presentation really um, and, and the reason it's come out now is because we've got mock exams so this is the first week of mock exams but you'll get a letter with the whole timetable on the only thing the reason i've put this on is because i just want to point out that on there it'll say things like option b and option a as you can see on the thursday and friday those options if you're not sure which subject is which it's when when your child has that double lesson that is when they have their exams so it will look the same as their timetable so you'll be able to tell from their timetable which option is which so effective revision it's really important um and it's you know it is a very important year and students need to get organized and prepared so that they can perform to the best of their ability not just in exams but throughout the year because we may be having to provide center assessed grades for part or all of the students work this year so everything that they do is really going to be is going to count so revision quite straightforward i'm not going to say it's exciting but it's quite straightforward the first stage is to understand the work so if there's been any work that your child hasn't understood while they've been on lockdown or in lessons then they've got to ask the teacher just simply ask the teacher get them to explain it make sure they can understand it and then it's a case of producing summaries so um revision cards uh, mind maps those sort of things to summarize the to summarize the work and get the key bits of information from it and then it's finding ways to memorize it lots of different ways lots of different techniques you know practice questions testing teaching those sort of things to help memorize it and practice with it revision is not a passive thing reading something over and over again is not revision and, and it will not stick so you need to practice with it and finally review it what have you learned what can you do well what do you need to do more of so every time you do a, a past paper you need to have a really good look at it and say these are the areas that i'm not sure about so revision should be active not passive so your child just reading through a revision guide over and over again is not the way to do it so um there's a little video to watch really with effective revision tips and, and i think it's quite useful to watch so i'll just put it on and, and let you listen to it time for school and it's no surprise that many of us are determined to study smarter instead of longer but which study tips and tricks actually work scientifically and can help you get those perfect grades first up research shows that study sessions are most effective in small short chunks instead of cramming in a 10-hour study session it's much more effective to spread it out into 20 30 minute sessions over a few weeks this is because your brain is better at encoding information into the synapses in short, repeated sessions as opposed to one large one. And this is why even learning different skills, whether it's swimming, tennis, or a singing lesson, often follows this same format. And while cramming and pulling all-nighters may be a ritual, it turns out that this is linked to the lowest grades. After prolonged nocturnal study sessions, reasoning and memory may be negatively affected for up to four whole days. Instead, setting up specific times in a day or during the week just to study primes your brain by creating a routine, and over time, studying actually becomes easier as your brain is trained to learn in those moments. And while many of us spend hours passively rereading our notes or highlighting a textbook, studies have shown this to be ineffective. It doesn't improve your understanding of topics, nor does it link key concepts together. It can even be detrimental as it draws your attention to less important information. Flashcards, on the other hand, are proven to be excellent memory reinforcement tools, whether during your scheduled study times or during off times like a bus ride home. It also helps to have a specific goal for each study session. Instead of aimlessly studying, pick one aspect you'll focus on, whether it's balancing chemical equations or learning how to conjugate French verbs. If you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. In studies where individuals were asked to learn a passage and then half were told that they would be tested on the material while the other half were told they would have to teach it to other students, 
Participants expecting to teach it did much better at understanding the main points. When you're expecting to teach, your brain organizes the information in a more logical, coherent structure. Of course, practice, practice, practice. Not only do practice tests put your brain in the environment, but even if you make mistakes, they help identify gaps in your knowledge. Practice tests have also been shown to increase confidence, thereby leading to better performance. So where should you be studying? Research shows that having a designated sacred spot for study that's well equipped with every tool you might need is best. Just like setting times, this primes your brain for studying. Have an awesome study playlist? Not so fast. While some studies have shown that certain types of classical music can help improve concentration, a recent study has shown that learning with rhythmic background noise can be detrimental to focus, and those not using music fared much better. And if you haven't already, put away your phone. This is a no-brainer, but your texts and social media notifications severely decrease concentration. Of course, exams can be extremely stressful, so if you want some tips on how to deal with exam anxiety, check out our ASAP Thought video which breaks down some tips for that. Link in the description. And a big thank you to TD Bank for sponsoring this video. If you're heading to campus this fall, click on the link below or... Okay, so just to sum that up, effective revision is done in chunks, small chunks. Your brain, brain just won't take in you know extended pieces of, of trying to revise clearly obviously when you get to practice exam papers you'll have to lengthen the sessions but in terms of the learning the first part of revision the sort of memory uh, that's best done in small chunks with breaks in between um, so and planning to revise having a timetable so it becomes habit is is far better than just saying oh well I've got a few minutes now I'll, I'll revise so so planning a, a timetable Using flashcards, don't just keep rereading, but actually make cards and, and get people to test. Achievable goals, revising small sections. Don't just go, I'm going to revise French. It, it needs to be part of French that you would go and revise. And revise it as if you're going to teach it. Um, if you're able to explain something to other people, then you really do fully understand it. And when you're further on with your revision, then you can start practicing with past papers and, and answer questions as much as you can there. You need a designated area of study with all the, the equipment there, and that's where your work mode begins. And you can avoid distractions, so not playing music, not having background noise, um, and not having phone near you. So that little area of, of, of the house is where you study and you take all the distractions away. So those are our top tips in terms of effective revision. But the two things that really are the best things that I could say and suggest to you in terms of improving outcomes and exams are this distributed practice, starting early and giving you an opportunity to revisit topics. So this is why we produce this video um, so early on really. Um, and, and Revision should have been going on with the knowledge organizer work, the homework, the 2020 anyway, but start in earnest with revision, small chunks, even if we're just doing 20 minutes a night, it's still really effective uh, and you're able to then go and revisit before the exams. And testing, testing, testing. Um, get ask people to ask you questions, uh, get, get, teach people, do flashcards and, and check them, but test, test, test. And students should use a variety of techniques to aid their revision. There isn't one one size fits all. Some things work better for other uh, other students. And we'll talk about all the different techniques in the other video. So on our website, um, in the students area, there's a revision support um, uh, section. If you go into the revision support section, we'll start to have these videos in there, um, but also um, we will have in there a big subject revision guide. So there's information on each subject and, and, and how you can revise each subject. A big revision guide with revision tips and, and techniques that you can use uh, from using mnemonics to making creating um, flashcards. And then there'll be an examiner, uh, examination guide. And obviously that will be updated with the new information as we get it. Um, and, and obviously if we get really big news we will we'll send that out to you so that's all on there already for you to go um so what can you do as a parent so first of all try and make sure that revision begins now so that every assessment can be a true reflection of your child's ability um 
we don't want to go to centre assessed grades like we did last year, but if we do have to produce them, it's really important that we're producing them based on what your child can do. Uh, oh, sorry, what your child has done, not what we think your child can do, because we're just not able to do that. So we have to be able to see that. Um, in terms of study skills, just uh, find a place and, and away from distractions that your child can study in, a quiet place to study, whether that be a dining room table or, or a desk uh, or a table in, in, in their room. And help them to produce a realistic revision timetable and stick to it. And remember to chunk that revision down into 25 minute se sessions. And really, probably only four of those as a maximum before a longer break. So you could do 25 minutes with five minutes off four times, but then you would need a longer break in between that before you did anything else. And offer to test them or ask them to teach you on their work. Um, those are really, really good techniques. So, so please, you know, join in with their revision. Um, a little bit about coping with exams. And we'll, like I say, an exams officer is going to talk to you and do another video about exactly about exams but it's really important that they know exactly what's expected of them in each exam paper and they're going to get that information from the individual su subject um, presentations so every single subject is going to do a presentation like this to talk to you about their subject what to expect how to revise best for their subject how to be successful and make sure your child has a good night's sleep before an exam and that includes the mock exams and that won't happen unless they're practiced if, if a child is used to going to bed at um, 12 o'clock every night they're not suddenly going to go to sleep at 10 o'clock that needs to happen over um, over a long period of time and make sure they have a good breakfast um, if they don't have a, a good breakfast then that they they won't be able to think as well um, apparently beans on toast is the best breakfast for exams and make sure they've got all the equipment um, they've got they need with them and that they set off in plenty of time for an exam if they're rushing uh, towards an exam hall they're just going to get stressed and that's not that's not going to be helpful um, so what we do so we run mock exams um, and that helps the students sort of understand um, what it might feel like and it helps us to see if there's any additional support we need to put in or if anyone needs some special consideration for their exams. Um, we produce revision support presentations like this and like I say there's going to be quite a lot this year all in that area. We're going to get a student to do that in terms of how they best prepared um, exams markers to do it. We're going to do one about reaching for the, the top grades. We're going to do one about different techniques. So there'll be lots to go at and have a look at. Obviously, we sell revision material in the school shop. Once we get after Christmas, the tutor times and assemblies are going to become much more focused on revision and stress management after Christmas. There's lots of revision support material already available on our website, uh, but more will go on. Uh, so revision ideas, revision timetables, etc. will go on to our website. Um, there'll be lots of revision materials in the Google Classrooms for, for each of the subjects. And we will finish our subject teaching early. Even after our gap, we, we've planned our, our sort of recovery curriculum so that we've got time to revise in there um, and so that we can become much more exam focused. And we will... Um, we are doing extended support sessions, so additional sessions for some students, and those will um, increase as we go throughout the year. We also produce an exams and warm up booklet um, to support that final push towards exams. So I hope that this has been useful and, and given you an idea about, you know, what you can do and what we're going to do to support. Um, There'll be lots of opportunities for, for you to get in touch with us um, and lots of opportunities uh, for you to listen to more of these videos. So thank you very much for your time and uh, good luck to all our students who will be taking their mock exams soon. Thank you. Good night.